Hey everybody, Dr. Greg here. Guess what? It's finally here. I know we've waited for a long time, some of us patiently, some of us not so patiently, but the uh, Unreal Engine VR injection mod is here. And I think we're just calling it UEVR now, which I like a lot better. Because I think injection has kind of a odd, everybody kind of associates that with Vorpex and this is not Vorpex trust me so uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started what I've done here is I've got like four games that I've been testing out each with varying difficulties on how they set up from the super easiest to one that needs a little bit more work and uh, then we're gonna go and we're gonna talk about exporting files we're gonna talk about importing profiles uh, so yeah it's gonna be just kind of a, a, a very this is not a super in-depth vid, so don't worry about that uh, because we just got this mod like two days ago and I d just did not have enough time to really learn this this mod. It's it's There's a lot of tinkering that you need to do in some cases. Not all, but you know, we'll, you'll see that when we get going. So let's go ahead and we're going to start. We're going to start with the uh, easiest game that there was. Um, pretty much just plug and pl play and that is Visage. This is a game that I did play in Vorpex and I absolutely loved it even though it had that kind of flat Vorpexy wrapped around your head look to it. It was still pretty immersive and scary 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 but the graphics weren't great you know because it was Vorpex. This one they are absolutely beautiful. This mod has uh, three things that you can do. You can do native stereo, you can do sequential synced and you can do um a, a, an aer type thing um this one works great with native stereo so you have a real native vr looking game in visage it is fantastic so let's talk about how to inject into the game first so what you need to do is first you need to connect your headset now you connect your quest or whatever whichever virtual desktop airlink whatever steam link whichever you use or you can use a cable or just use your pc vr headset you don't have to worry about all that because it's already in it there and it, i usually just turn on steam vr first uh, after that go ahead and open uevr and then it'll ask you to restart as admin just click on that and then you'll have this sheet that comes up go ahead and open your game and let the game load up to like a menu screen because that way it loads in all your shaders and all that kind of stuff and you aren't going to interfere with any of that once that happens go to the overlay and go to select game and then you just go you click the the game that you want like visage and then just click inject and uh, now click on your game stream and you can so it moves the game screen to the top and all of that and you'll have the overlay inside if you want to bring your overlay up when you're in the game if you're using like a gamepad just go ahead and click both can both uh, uh, sticks in at the same time and it'll bring that up also uh, if you use it it does the same like if I'm using my index controllers if I just click both sticks it brings the overlay up and then you can just use your motion control to move around the map which is nice uh, if you're using your gamepad you just use your bumpers or left and right bumpers to move through the different tabs on the left side to bring and then to select things you just use your directional pad so it, it's really easy to use in that respect um, whenever you're in a game like Visage, make sure that you first thing you do is you always just set your height, your standing origin, and recenter. And uh, you can do all of that with just I use if I'm on my gamepad, I just click the one of the bumpers, and then I just use my directional pad, and you just move it to the left or to the right, and you'll select each one of them. Once you're on there, just click A on your on your gamepad, and it sets all of that stuff up for you. So that's really super easy to do. And you can use motion controls, like I said, to just you know point over them and click A, and it does the same thing. This game, like I said, it's the easiest of all of them. It's plug and play. There's really nothing you really need to do. It uses native stereo. I did attach the UI to my head by clicking aim with head and slash HMD in the input tab. And then you also have to go to the camera tab on the left, just use your left and right bumpers to move down to that and uh or right bumper i think but it doesn't matter whichever one moves you down to camera just pick that one and then uh there's a box that you'll see that says decoupled pitch make sure that you check that so yeah that's that's pretty much it now you're going to be able to play this absolutely terrifying game in true vr and uh i can't wait this is one of the first ones i want to stream for sure the next game we're going to talk about there's another one that I've really, really, really wanted to play in VR ever since it launched because it's absolutely terrifying, and that is the Outlast Trials. I mean, this game is really stressful flat. 
So in VR, holy cow, it is a whole different monster, let me tell you. So this one needs a bit of a tweak here and there to get it to work right. So anyway, after you inject into the game, make sure you set your height, your standing origin, your recentering, and then uh, highlight the Unreal tab on the left of the overlay and go over to Rendering Method and select Sync Sequential. Native Stereo does not work in this game and it really messes up with some of the shaders and textures and it's just a mess and completely unplayable, but Sync Sequential works perfectly. Now go over to the input tab and go down and make sure that you check multiplayer support because you're going to want to play this with your friends and then select head slash HMD for aim method. And as you could see on this page, if you can't do smooth turning, there is a snap turn option. And then there you can set your, you know, the, the turning angles and the turning, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So, you know, if, if you get sick, with smooth turn, you don't have to deal with that because there are, is the option to customize that out, which is great. This, this mod has so many options. Let's go to the runtime at the top left column and work on the UI. On overlay options, you set the UI offset distance and size in any way you want. If you use a gamepad, it jumps pretty large in increments when you're using the directional pad, pad to change them. So you may want to use your mouse on this uh, for a more delicate. I've tried motion controls as well and it, they're really touchy, so pretty hard to control. So I think mouse is probably gonna be best if you can do that. Another vital thing that needs to be done is making sure that your crosshair actually triggers the prompt to activate the things that you want to pick up or you know things you wanna interact with. This is all still in the runtime tab. I found that if you find an object that needs a prompt, it's best just to walk up to that object and bring up the overlay in this area and go to the box that says UI follows view and uncheck it. Now you can move the UI crosshair with the right thumbstick. You can also just play like this if you want to. I know some people like it, but I really hate it. I like it to move with my head. <laughs> so anyway, now move that crosshair over the object till the prompt to interact with it comes up. Now just leave that crosshair there. Now bring up the overlay again and scroll down with your directional pad to where it says UI follows view box and just leave that there and physically look at the crosshair again. And while your head is in that position and you can see the prompt, check UI follows view box in the overlay and now it's calibrated. So now you should be good to go. So you have this profile and you wanna export it. While the game is still running, just go to your desktop and the left side of the UEVR app where you injected from, you will see the export config. Just click on that and your profile will be exported in the form of a zip file. You can just upload that file to Google Drive for sharing and I believe that flat to vr are working on a centralized page where there will be tons of profiles that you can just download so you don't have to tinker with any of this stuff if you don't want to. The game will just be running right out of the box. That's pretty awesome. The next game that I tried was The Outer Worlds. This is another one when it first came out that I was like, oh my God, I'd want it in VR so bad. Uh, I did try it in Vorpex. Uh, it looked pretty good in Vorpex actually, but the, the aim would not move with your head no matter what it you did. And you had to use a right thumbstick and I just hate doing that, especially in VR. So uh, I just didn't really play it that much. This is an interesting game. It has to be the original version, not the Spacer's Choice version to work with UEVR. And also if you have a Rift S, you'll want to play it in that. It has a strange issue where the guns double on you, like double vision in your right field of view, and it really messes with your eyes. I tried it in my big screen beyond, the Quest 3, and uh, in my index, and in all cases, the guns doubled. But in the Rift S, it didn't. I just had one gun. Now, the reason for this, the guns in this game are not 3D models. They're 2D sprites. You'll really see it in the Rift S, and it's kind of weird just to have this little flat 2D gun floating out there to the right of your hand. But honestly, the game is so gorgeous in VR, and it plays so slick that I didn't really mind it at all. Dog says that the doubling and the uh, other headsets is due to the canted displays. Um, but like I said, if you have a Rift S, the rest of the game feels so good, looks so good, plays so good that... I personally can deal with a 2D gun for now because it's going to need an independent modder to come in to mod in 3D guns if they so choose. And then the last game that we're going to go over here is Aliens Fireteam Elite. Now with this one, we're just going to talk about importing a file. I've included links in the description to all of the games that I've covered here with profiles that you can just download and import and not have to mess with anything if you don't want to. But the profile I'm using here is from Alex at the UEVR team. 
And he has added in some great six degrees of freedom, motion controls, and made the game a first person view instead of a third person view. So here are the steps to import a profile. First, download the Alien Fireteam Elite profile from the link in the description. It's called Endeavor Win 64 Shipping Zip, if you're curious of what the name of it is. <laughs> and also, then you can open the UEVR mod and restart as admin, and then start up Fireteam Elite. Once the game is loaded and you're in a menu screen, click Import on the UEVR app and select that profile that you just downloaded. Do not unzip it, just click the zip file and then click inject and it's done. I did have to go into the Unreal tab on the overlay and enable near clip plane at the very bottom of that page and then raise it up a bit to prevent the shotgun on my back from constantly coming into my view while I was running. But other than that, this game is completely plug and play. And now you have a great six DOF motion control first person game and from a native flat third person game. How amazing is that? Like I said, I am expecting a ton of profiles to upload for this, uh, literally hundreds of games, so people don't have to go to college for a semester to learn how to navigate this mod if they don't want to. <laughs> All right, so my final thoughts on this. I know that this is only four games, but it's taken me a lot of time the last couple of days to just kind of learn how to navigate the mod and get the games working and all the testing and everything. And uh, we just got this mod two days ago. so. It's absolutely amazing for us PC VR folks. We're, we're not going to be starving for AAA VR games to play in our headsets ever again. This is exciting friggin' times, my friends. I hope this video also helps temper some expectations a bit and realizing that some games are not going to be just plug and play. Now, according to Elliot at Flat VR, about 90% are, and that's pretty freaking amazing. But this mod has so many options and is so customizable, it's definitely worth learning. I can't believe how gorgeous these games are. It's not like Vorpex at all. You don't get that flap wrapped around your head pseudo 3D, but you do get absolutely gorgeous native VR looking games. Make sure to head over to Prey Dog's Patreon and show this guy some love for all this amazing work that he's done. I would also like to thank Flat VR for including me in this embargo because it's been really fun. Now, if you like this video, you found it helpful, I would love it if you would smash that like and subscribe button and don't forget to ring that notification bell because there are going to be a ton of UEVR videos coming to my channel, uh, including gameplay and tutorials and all of that as I learn things to help you guys out. So anyway, that's it for me, folks. Thanks for watching. Dr. Greg out.